Welcome to Bad Gear, the show about the world's most hated audio tools. Episodes like this wouldn't be possible without an incredible community of synth meme aficionados. No matter if it's Korg, Roland, Yamaha or Teenage Engineering, there are humorous depictions of almost every aspect of their instruments readily available on the internet. Today we are going to talk about the IK Multimedia Uno Synth Pro. This 2021 analog synthesizer and professional version of the Walker-esque original Uno synth caused quite a stir among synth-loving people, and yet it is the first piece of gear I wasn't able to find any means about. This is either a very good or a very bad thing. At the first glance, the Uno Pro is ticking all the what if a vintage hand dryer and a micro cork made passionate love boxes. A Fatah keypad with aftertouch but only if you didn't cheap out and chose the desktop version, extra plasticky and slightly wobbly knobs, two of them reserved for filter duties. And four general purpose ones. The three oscillators offer smoothly tweakable basic waveforms. Sync and ring modulation and disciples of Nick Almighty will appreciate easily accessible PWM. In addition to the aforementioned two pole low and high pass filter. Known from the original Uno synth, IK implemented another 2 and 4 pole low pass. that can be used in serial and parallel mode. There are link modes and spacing sets an offset between the cutoff frequencies of the filters. Two syncable LFOs and loopable ADSR envelopes for amplitude and filter. Nothing to get excited about. Things get really interesting as soon as you fire up the 16 slot modulation matrix. Yes, it can be a bit fiddly to dial in, but the underlying concept is straightforward. You can choose from a variety of sources and destinations and it can be used for feeding the CV outputs. Speaking of fiddly, while the noisy internal FX Have a dedicated control layer, fine-tuning the algorithms requires you to deal with a dodgy main encoder and small yet crystal clear display. This and a few other details aside, a majority of the parameters is only the touch of a spongy rubber button away. Don't expect the finesse of a dedicated specialist, but the internal sequencer has 64 steps. It is easy to use, versatile, comes with a metronome and allows for recording of parameter tweaks and chords. Yes, that's right, IK threw in a paraphonic mode that lets you play the three oscillators independently. They still have to share all the other parts of the synth engine though. There's an arpeggiator. A song mode lets you chain up to 64 patterns and it shouldn't come as a surprise that simple pads... Juicy basses, FX laden leads, and nice percussion are on the menu. Even before the shiny black surface has attracted smudge and fingerprints, parts of the labeling are hard to read. And although the metal enclosure is a nice touch, micro USB, mini jack headphone out, the strange power plug and janky power off procedure.
don't seem so pro after all. Tuning is solid, which it should be as the synth takes ages to calibrate at startup. I didn't really feel the need to use a software editor, but it's not like you can simply download one from IK's homepage anyway. You need to install their product manager first, which feels like a cross between a used car salesperson and spyware. Enter the product key, which I don't have as I borrowed this synth from Tom of Synth Anatomy. Thanks for that bro and if you are not the first owner you will have to pay 20 bucks for license transfer or draw 25 cards. If having to rely on the infrastructure of a company known for impeccable customer support is okay for you, Uno Pros are available for prices you would expect from Uli's little shop of horrors. An instrument like the Uno Pro would have completely transformed the music tech landscape only 10 years ago. Is it still relevant in these times of abundance? You have already heard the UNO Pro in today's intro tune. I prefer this version to many others created with instruments further up the food chain. Let's explore some of the synth's sweet spots in the first jam. That's maybe not the most spectacular analog sound, but the sweet spots are wide, the low end is solid even at higher resonance settings and the crunch of the drive section is tasteful. Time to give the paraphonic mode a try and set the FX section to epic. worked better than expected. Sure, the internal FX unit is no lexicon, but you can make it work with a little menu diving and the terrible signal to noise ratio isn't a problem in a dense arrangement like this. I wanna know if we can push the cinematic side of the UNO Pro even further with the blessings of the DAW in this minimal techno soundtrack of an arthouse film about a parallel dimension making off bad gear. Pro is a fine sounding synth, it is easy to use and although the UI concept and design language might be an acquired taste, I really like the vintage style analog sounds and nice keybed. However, the synth comes with a few quirks. First and foremost, the cheap feel of the physical controls, Windows XP like boot up time and strange license policy of its manufacturer. Maybe I'm an old man shouting at clouds, but I would rather spend money on some half broken antique than on a great synth from a company that opens a shop on my hard drive and might even charge me for it. Thanks for watching and see you next time! Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode. Feel free to like, subscribe, become a patron and leave a comment what other kind of gear you would like to see and hear on the show. 